Hello, everyone. Welcome back to English Nine Class. This is Teacher Adam. It's my joy to help you learn today. How are you doing, my dear students? I hope you're not getting tired of seeing my face and hearing my voice. Anyway, today's video will teach you a lesson that is timely and useful. But before digging into our discussion, watch this video first. With digital tools, it is easier than ever to create, edit, and publish your work to the world. But there's a cost. It's also easier than ever to spread misinformation, and fake news has become a real issue in recent times. We see this with students. According to a Stanford study, only 25% of high school students were able to identify an accurate news story compared to a fake one. Students also had a hard time distinguishing between real and fake photographs, as well as authentic and staged videos. Researchers use the words bleak and dismaying to describe this, but it's not going away anytime soon, and that's a very real problem. So how do we fix it? Well, here's a five-step process that I've used with students. A word of caution, it's not perfect and there are probably other models out there, but I thought I would share it just in case you might want to use it. We call it the five C's of critical consuming. Number one, context. Look at the context of the article. When was it written? Where does it come from? Have the events changed since then? Is there any new information that could change your perspective? Number two, credibility. Check the credibility of the source. Does the site have a reputation for journalistic integrity? Does the author cite credible sources? Is it satirical? Is it on the list of fake news sites? Is it actually an advertisement posing as a real news story? Number three, construction. Analyze the construction of the article. What is the bias? Are there any loaded words, any omissions, any propaganda techniques? Can you distinguish between the facts and the opinions? Or is it merely a bunch of speculation? Number four, corroboration. Corroborate the information with other credible news sources. Make sure it's not the only source making this claim. And if it is, there's a good chance it's not actually true. Number five, compare. Compare it to other news sources to get a different perspective. Find other credible sources from other areas of the ideological or political spectrum to provide nuance and get a bigger picture of what's actually going on. When we teach students media literacy and they learn how to consume critically, they learn how to think critically. And critical thinking citizens are good for democracy. And that, well, that's good for everyone. Knowing that you guys have social media accounts and access to countless websites, it is important that you know how to spot online resources that are trustworthy and those that are spreading wrong information. That is what our topic for today will be all about. In your search for information, it is a challenge to evaluate the resources that would be most appropriate for your needs. Today, you will learn to assess your sources, such as general sources and websites, based on the following criteria. Shout out to our source, Step-by-Step -step Guide and Research Rescue, Evaluating Credibility from BYU Library. Let's start! First are the general resources. Using the TAARP method, 
Here are the things that you need to check. T is for timeliness. Your resources need to be recent enough for your topic. If your paper is about technology, for example, you can no longer discuss about the ones that existed in the 1990s, not unless your paper talks about computer history. The first A is for authority. The information must come from an author or organization that has authority to speak on your topic. If your topic is about diseases, you better get information from people in the field of medicine. The second A is for audience. The information must be appropriate to the end user's level of comprehension. Who is the resources target audience? Is it for general public or for experts in a certain field? R is for relevance. There must be connection made between the information that is presented and the thesis. The article must be related to the topic. And P is for perspective. Biased sources can be helpful in creating and developing an argument and may help readers understand the other side as well. However, extreme biased sources may give information that is misleading and ineffective for your paper. The second type of resources that you must check are websites. Now that information is accessible in just a click of her finger, we have to be more careful of what information we get online. Know the website's credibility through the TAARP method which was discussed earlier. However, here are additional ways that you may want to consider. 1. The look and feel of the website. Reliable websites usually have a more professional look and feel than personal websites. 2. The URL of your results. .com, .edu, .gov, .net, and .org all actually mean something that can help you to evaluate the website. Using the URL, you may know the type a website is considered as. First are information resources. These are the ones that present factual information, usually sponsored by educational institutions and government agencies. They include .edu or .gov in their URL. Observe these images. Second are advocacy resources. These are sponsored by an organization that tries to sell ideas or influence public opinion. They include .org in their URL like this one. Third are business or marketing resources. These are sponsored by a commercial entity that sells products. Though they are often biased, they can still provide useful information. They include .com in their URL, just like these. Next are news resources. They provide extremely current information on hot topics. They also include .com in their URL. Examples are...
And finally, we have personal web pages or resources. These are sites such as social media sites. Reminder, exercise great caution when using information from these. Apart from the fact that fake news and information abound in social media platforms, they do not hold much weight in the scholarly community when used in academic papers. Notice these logos. To continue on what else to find out in evaluating websites, Number three are advertisements. These can indicate that information may be less reliable. Number four, check the links on the page. Broken and incorrect links can mean that no one maintains the site, so the information may be out of date or unreliable. And number five, check when the page was last updated. The dates when pages were last updated are valuable clues to its currency and accuracy. Here's your exercise for today. Give me one online resource or website where you can search truthful information about the following topics. We will talk about your answers on our live session. Science and Health, Coronavirus Vaccine Technology, 5G Connection in the Philippines Sports, NBA Playoffs Entertainment, Tax on Streaming Apps And Education, Homeschooling versus Distance Learning We are done for the day, but before I say goodbye, let us have a short reflection first. Here's a little reminder from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. This verse is a challenge posted to all learners. The Lord has blessed us with the opportunities and the other blessings that we may utilize to continue learning despite our current situation. In return, let's challenge ourselves and strive hard in whatever we do. Let our development and learning be our offering to the Lord. As God is truth himself, let us filter what comes in our mind and our heart. Let us make sure they come from credible or reliable sources, best if they come from God's word. Glory to God! That's it for today. Thank you for watching this video. If there are parts of the discussion that are not clear to you, you have the choice to watch this video again or take note of your questions and book consultation date with me. Before I say goodbye, I'd like to thank and acknowledge the following sources that made this learning material possible. It's a wrap. Once again, thank you. God bless.
stay safe till I see you again. This is Teacher Adam, signing off. Bye!